Harriet Tubman up, I would have been one of the conductors on the underground. Oh, yeah. All right, and when you got away from the plantation, if you looked like you wanted to go back to the white man, they say Harriet would pull a pistol out on you. I would have had two pistols. I would have pulled both of them and cut them on you now all day, Bubba. You ain't going back to the white man. You either going to be free or we going to free you right here, Big Bubba. You ain't going back to the Peace, Black Power. Welcome to another edition of Baba TV House of Consciousness. I'm very privileged and honored to be in the presence of uh, our dear brother Haley Garima. This is the brothers and sisters. This is for those who don't know. This is the brother who directed and the maker of the movie Sankofa that has went all over the world and touched the hearts and minds of so many of our people. And um, I would just like to say, sir, uh, that was that movie was heart wrenching. As I was talking to the sister, one of the uh, actresses in the movie, um, what inspired you, sir, to to make that movie? Well, <clears throat> you know, uh, I would say uh, finding my brothers and sisters in America. I came from Africa and then finding them in America and learning so many things uh, that I didn't know was the, I would say, the engine that drove me to do the film. It was a very difficult film because <clears throat> we had to go to Africa and into uh, European and other countries to find the fund because in the U.S. we couldn't get it funded. And so it was very difficult, but for me it was a film I had to do because I wanted to make a tribute to my, uh, to all the things I benefited for discovering, learning, working together with African Americans. Mm, 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 beautiful. Um, how did you go about getting all the actors together? Like Muta Baruka and the different actors, how did you go about that? Well, and, you know, it, I, I would say by, you know, the kind of relationship I have within the African-American community, I can say it's a, 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 work of, a word of mouth people, community people kept pointing people, especially those who knew about the script, kept telling me about, you know, especially Muta. I didn't, I didn't know him before. But they kept saying to me, that's the guy who should do Shango, so... Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. He yeah. played that role. So yeah. it is, it's basically, you know, uh, community people, uh, individuals who had uh, their hearts in the project. Uh, it meant a lot to them as much as it did to me. And that was basically the chemistry of the marriage between not only the actors, but the crew also. Yes, <clears throat> um, and you directed the whole. Yeah, I wrote it and directed it. Wow, wow! Because I think I and think produced it with my wife. My wife is the co-producer. She's also a filmmaker. Uh, her name is Shirikiana. She made the film uh, through the door of no return. That was the sequel. Yeah, well, it's kind of we we prefer people showing it first before Sankofa because. It puts a lot of the location, <clears throat> the landscape of slavery, in context mm. for uh, Sankofa to, to, to be benefited from more than what one could get from glancing the film. Wow. Do you have any other films coming up? What I'm doing now is <clears throat> I'm doing a film on the Ethiopian-Italian War of 1935 when Mussolini's fascists uh, invaded Ethiopia. You got the butt and, kick. Yes, and uh, well, it it is the first uh, uh, country invaded by during the you know the Second World War. For my father began in Ethiopia when uh, Mussolini's fascist army invaded Ethiopia, and then I'm upstairs doing a film on the Maroons of the United States runaway Africans, uh, Africans who determine their own agency to be free. They fascinate me. Mm. And so we're doing a documentary on the Maroons of the United States also. Funding is a problem, but we're doing our best. <clears throat> Beautiful. Um, how important do you think it is then for our, our African brothers and sisters to understand what happened to us? 
Well, you know, if we, you know, it's basically what Sankofa means. In order to understand the complicated uh, existence of present tense now, one has to understand the past. Mm -hmm. uh, if especially you want to go forward, there's no forward movement without, uh, I would say, uh, re uh, recalibrating the past in the context of the present to find the future. So it's an African philosophy. Uh, Sankofa means get from the past what you can in order to platform your revolution, your jump, your elevation. And so for me, that's why even I named the film Sankofa, because for me it says so much. It's a volumes and volumes of philosophy inherent in the Adinkira symbol of the Sankofa. I just want to say that there, <coughs> there's a brother in Harlem, um, if you can ever get there, uh, across the street from the Apollo. He goes by the name of Brother Sarnetta. Uh -huh. And the first time, even though I grew up here in D.C. and didn't know you were right up under my nose, the first time that I ever saw the movie, it was given to me by a brother in Harlem. That's a black man being burned. Over 500,000 white men, white women, and white children. They all came out to burn that black man alive. This is where the word barbecue comes from. Okay, hey, the nigga. So when they finished burning him alive, my oh man, you gotta focus, brother. Man. Oh, that's not it. When they finished burning him alive, they hung him up in front of the black community. Why did they hang him up in the black community? It was a time when the mothers. And our fathers couldn't walk down the street without seeing little babies hanging from a tree or hanging from a lamp pole. So they put him there to draw, uh, to draw fear into black people. When you look at this picture here, there was three men that were supposed to be hung on this. His name is James Cameron. You can see the blood coming through the sheet. Every time you see the folks up around their way, you know they castrated him. They cut off his penis. And that's why the blood is coming through the sheet. They stuck a cold ball through his heart. And every time they finish the lynching, they always fill your body up with bullets. They shot him over a thousand times as he was being burned alive. And most of the time they did it just for fun. You ain't even focused on that. You gotta look through the screen, not you got it. I gotta get a cameraman, man. Cameraman, brother. But this is what they did to him. They shot him over a thousand times. And when you really look good, you will see all his intestines is out. His guts is out. He's still on fire right now. See the head? The head is still on fire. This is what they did to us for 500 years. And still going on right now. Guess what? In Africa. They still got slaves going on in Africa. Y'all ain't know that, did you? In the Sudan. In the Sudan. Are there any questions? Come on now. Hit me with some questions. What's your question? Well, they use it. They use the corporal. They use the police officers. They shoot us down 50 shots. They shoot us down 41. Y'all heard of Amadou Diallo? Oh, they shot him. They shot that one black man 41 times. And then they said they thought he had a gun. That's, they, always, they always use that as an excuse. Sean Bell, they shot at him 50 shots. How, how long was that ago? About three months ago. Like three months ago? Yeah, four three months, months ago. ago. They shot him 50 times and said they thought he had a gun. James Bullard, Jasper, Texas, 1998. Hey. 1998, the white boys put a chain around his neck and they dragged him for miles and his head popped off like a grape. Right? They were Texas, so y'all should know about that little the clan that they arrested um, all the black men were drunk. I mean, they were drunk on them. You heard about that in Texas, right? Yes, yes. The whole town was arrested. Oh, you know, as you can look at the white girl right here, definitely glad she's smiling because her father is going to cut the penis off of the black men, and she's going to be the one that take home the prize. They always cut pieces of our bodies off. See that? The white man right here cutting off the toe. Yeah. To give back to the government. To bring back. 
these are real pictures up here. We didn't take the pictures, as you can see. So when people stand up here and call us racist, you see, we got racist, we're just giving you information. Information, the truth stands out clear from error. Study can help a lot. Yes, yeah. yes, I'm sure he would like, be. I'm going to give I'll you his like telephone his number. Yeah. Yes, I will. I will. He has real. That's. I mean, that's his number one movie. I'm going to give you his phone number when he really, really has pushed that movie, sir. Thank you, sir. On 125th Street. Um, thank you. So um, I want to thank you for giving me this time. I know you're very busy. No, it's and, good. And it's he good. can give you a lot better interview than I can. No problem. So hopefully in the future, as soon as we get off camera, I'm going to give you his information right now. And thank you very much, brother. Thank you, my brother. All right. Now, once somebody got the mumbling, then somebody else got the mumbling. And before you know it, everybody in the yard was mumbling. They was mumbling the same thing, honey. I mean, it was just like a song. And everybody was just a mumbling child. We was a chant. <laughs> and we didn't have no idea what we was talking about. You hear me? But we was gone. Hmm. I expect whatever it was we were saying, it started to do the job. Because all of a sudden, that old cracker got the gasping for air. <laughs> he got the gasping. Lord, he couldn't catch his breath. Then his eyes got the rolling back in his head. Tongue got the, just going back in his mouth, you know. I mean, foam was just coming all out of his mouth. You hear me? Foam was coming out of the man's mouth. And right about that time, Dudu, she gets strong. She take a notion to jump back her arm. She put her eyes on that old cracker, honey, and he got the going around. My sister, Hasanatu Kamara. This sister uh, was the uh, sister who played in the movie Sankofa. Um, the actress in Sankofa, and I'm so very privileged to uh, be in her presence and to be in Sankofa Bookstore, which uh, the owner of the bookstore was the brother who made the film. Made the film. Yes. Um, sister, the first uh, question, what um, sparked your interest in, in the movie and, and wanting to participate in the movie? In the movie. Well, I, um, I saw highly in a play and during the halftime, he came up to me and told me he wanted me to be in his movie. Mm -hmm. And that's how I ended up in the film, you know? Okay. And uh, I, I really didn't think that much about it. Mm -hmm. I had been friends with Muta Baruka yeah. uh, for a while. I met Muta through Kwame Ture. Kwame Ture had done African Liberation Day in Jamaica. And so I never le left America. I'm born and raised here in D.C. And... Um, so uh, when I uh, Muta was in the film, I I didn't know anything about it, but highly insisted that I play one of the characters in, in his film. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, I just want to say that that was that movie. Yeah. It was a hundred percent. It touched a lot of people. Yes. Thank I you. mean, it was a very heart wrenching to the core, very truthful uh, rendition of what happened to us as a people. And I think we need more movies like that. Yeah. You know, um, when was the movie made? Um, it was shot in, uh, in Ghana and uh -huh. Jamaica. The first part of it, the part that I'm in, was shot in Jamaica. In oh, the cane was fields, it? yeah. Cane fields of Jamaica, Trelawney in Trelawney. Because, I mean, Muta played that part. Yeah, he did. And you see him coming from out of the fields yeah. with that hatchet. Yeah. You know, no, machete. With the machete. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes. I didn't know you lived here in D.C. Uh-huh. I was born, born was raised born here. here. Yes. Yeah. And I've been a teacher here for a, a very long time. The, the film actually changed my life a lot. Because what it did is um, it motivated students. Uh, it made them realize that they could do a movie and I, I think film is the most important of all art um, all art pieces because it includes everything it includes music and dance and you know uh, writing uh, you know, script development it includes all those things so I, I didn't realize while we were doing the film that it would become as, as important as it has become. Um, I am, I'm the one who 
actually carries the gun. And when I did that, the people on the set, most of them were highly students. Yeah. And the people said, oh, Juma, that was my character name in the film, mm -hmm. they're going to remember you because you carried the gun. So yes. yeah. that was, uh, and it was a very difficult road yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to walk up that hill. That was very difficult, and it was very emotional, very emotional for me. I'm there when Nunu delivers the baby, and I, I just break down because it was so real. It was so real. She break, and the baby was a, a live baby, and she after she delivers the baby, she holds holds the baby up. Yeah. So when you see the camera pan. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when I I just couldn't take it anymore, you know. It just I just broke down, and that had happened to me twice. When they bring the runaways in, I uh, I break down then because highly highly had become like a a different person, you know. When he got those chains, some white man there in Jamaica had those chains, and um, and highly got it from him. But he was so full of emotions, yeah. um, you know, when he got those chains. I, I remember us sitting for breakfast at a bakery up near where we were shooting on the plantation. And he was just, just filled up, you know. Uh, it, was just, it was just so emotional to know that our ancestors actually wore those chains that he had. So when they're bringing the runaways in, you could hear you could hear the chains clanging, you know, and that, you know, I'm getting emotional just thinking about it now, you know. What went through your mind when you was holding that gun, when it was payback time? I mean, another woman was supposed to do that role. Uh, the woman who plays Lucy, she was supposed to be the one with the gun. Right. Uh, because she was a house slave and I was a field slave. I tell Nunu's story, you know, when I talk about how Nunu stared well, I'm not, at the I'm white not man at all. and Mace sent him Bauman, crazy. You know, she just um, sent him crazy. I live in New York and her son Joe, York City, you know, um, you know, no, because no, Nunu no, had been impregnated on the slave ship. And, um, and um, that, so, uh, I mean, York City, you that was a, a very emotional. What was going through my mind is, it seems as though I just went back into the past and I was reliving that. I think all of us felt that way, really, you know, um, it was like a possession, I guess, the only time I could ever remember feeling possessed, you know, was living that, living that again. I mean, I could look at it now, I've seen Sankofa, I don't know how many times, and I could look at it, uh, I have a friend, uh, Halima Shoy says, how many times have we seen Sankofa? You know, uh, for me, growing up in D.C., many of those people who were on an African, uh, uh, I feel like it's like had an African soul, passion like, on an African part, journey, you know? re-journey, you know, um, going so back, getting our names. There was to me a pre, a pre Hasanatu, and a post after Sankofa, a post Hasanatu. You know, Muta and I had known him. Muta really showed me Jamaica. You know, and I remember seeing him when I was grew up here in DC, uh -huh. and I remember seeing him go into Blue Now. Yeah, see his brother come in with his bare feet. Yeah, and I remember seeing him. This was probably 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, and does he still frequently come through? Um, I haven't seen him in a while. Mm -hmm. I said I was going to get in touch with him. I'm gonna try to go to Jamaica over the summer. Yeah. Um, it was. He told me then, your life will never be the same. Never at that point did I think we were going to be in a film together. I'd even gone to Hailey's house with him to discuss the film. And um, 
We used to joke like when we were in the field, in the uh, cane fields, we used to joke and call Haile Haile weird because Haile just, he changed too. He became like, he didn't have that much money and he just became shocked. I, when I tell new new story, um, highly, <laughs> it, it had been so much tension on the film. You know, highly got on his knees. The sound man said that I said crack. Uh, it broke up the sound system. <laughs> and so highly gets on his knees and he says to me. I want you to say cracker exactly like you said it. Put eyes on that old cracker, honey, and he got the going round. I feel like, uh, I mean, there were so many emotional moments, you know. Uh, when the baby came, when, when she delivered the baby, I felt um, there. It was just too much. I think like it's what was you know, they had covered the baby in what looked like blood, mm -hmm. and you could see the umbilical cord. Mm -hmm. That, I, I said it before, but that was really, really, you know, because I know that that happened to us. That's right. Timeless, you know, so many times it happened to us, you know. I mean, I could look at that now and I'm affected you know. Um, you know, when Nunu um, gets killed by her son, it's that really, uh, you, know, you know, it was a it was a difficult scene to shoot because it was shot in the Black River, and you know you had to go downhill to shoot to shoot it. That really, that scene, and the scene where. Uh, Shola is brand. Yes. When she denies that she's an African. Yes. I feel like it's like the same thing. You know, that, the only unfortunate that, thing I feel that like is, is that, that was very emotional. When you started and she says, I'm not an yeah, African, I'm not an African. Before Sankofa, I had encountered that so much in my teaching. I mean, still. I'm still getting my former students that are, <laughs> that are in denial about their Africanity. That's how how long and, and, and just how yeah. devastating that was to, yeah. you know, go through a period yeah. of continuously being raped of your culture, yeah. you know. Up until last year, I was, I'm still encountering young people uh, who don't want to hear that they're not here. Once I showed them Sankofa, the whole vibe changed. Just like here, there was a, a big movement to re-Africanize ourselves. And there were people who were calling themselves priests. Once Muta, not, Muta was here in the early part of when we had just finished the film, Muta said to me, Hasanatu, they think that we're real. They think that we are, that that was real, you know. And children will ask me, young people, high schoolers will ask me, Mama, you, you were a slave? <laughs> you know, they really... You know, they really feel it after they see the film, you know. Um, I'm working with a young man now, and there's a, a lot of uh, discussion around whether to be a slave or Sankofa. My piece, if we're telling the story, we need to appreciate any work on telling our story. Nobody wants to, nobody wants to hear it, really. I, I'm not going to say nobody, but for the most part, even my family, my, my, my brother told me it's too dark. The film was shot really dark, you know. Um, nobody really... Uh, but after, I didn't think it was going to be over 20 years now, you know. I didn't think that it would have that kind of impact. None of us thought that. You know, we make jokes on the set. Uh, we deal with highly weird, and, you know, all kinds of little jokes like that. We had, um, I, I remember doing a poem on, on it where I, I just sort of, I sort of felt that it would have an impact. There was a point when I, I wasn't moving as much as Haile wanted me to in terms of being a part of the film. And he said to a friend of mine, I don't think she understands what this is. 
I don't think she really understands yes. that film is forever. I didn't really, yes. you know, um, but now I do. After 20 something years, I really do, you know. It's such a transforming piece. I've had people to, you know, when, when I when I when it premiered, I didn't want to go with my family. I didn't want to influence it in any way. Yeah. You know, I just wanted them to see it and to see what they thought and felt without me being present in the theater. When when people start acting differently towards us, you know, and for me particularly. You know, growing up in D.C., um, the class thing is so, <laughs> so uh, crystallized like the creative world here, has always been mm -hmm. you know, the and I grew up like in uh, one of the fiercest ghetto in the city, like 8th and H.G. on Capitol Hill, <laughs> you know. Um, this is what, you know, Sankofa made a difference um, in terms of how people saw me. You know, I, I, I was really interested in being a teacher. I felt real fortunate that my teachers had been the top of the line teachers uh, in terms of African identity. You know, uh, C.L.R. James and uh, I, I include highly in that Kwame Touré, Bob Brown. Um, you know, so you they were they the were dedicated to um, race redemption. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like you know, yeah. Fox and I felt I felt I feel real fortunate. In the 70s I mean, I, I was a philosophy major in school, and, and that was by accident. It's like almost everything that happened, the ancestors must have planned. I didn't plan. That's right. I said the ancestors planned this because I had the best teachers. Quite by accident. I went to college by accident. I'm walking down the street and the guy said, you want to go to college? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and I, at that point, I, um, I was separated from my husband. I had four children. And I got the best teaching. But I remember my tuition at the Federal City College was something like $27 a quarter. So I got the, edu the four years, the five years I studied philosophy uh, from Chubo Karibo, you know, a brother who came to the Federal City College. Most of the people who came there to teach, they came to turn it around. They came to give us a sense of identity, you know, so Sankofa was like, the ancestors had sent this piece that highly said would last forever, you know, uh, for me to teach with. It made a difference, big difference. Well, I'd like to thank you for your time. Sister. Thank you. Thank you very thank you, much. seriously. So I don't think this is an accident either, you know. Yeah. Thank you. Such admiration of Khalid Muhammad, you know. And somebody told him I was in Sankofa. So he said, oh, can you come tonight? He was speaking at McKinley High. Talking about Colin Muhammad. Uh -huh. I think that was the very night I came and got my autograph from my brother at the school. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So he, I sat on, he asked me if I'd sit on stage, and I did. <laughs> and he introduced me to the audience. He said she was in one of the best films I've ever seen, but there was no blood. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. Kwame too. You know, yeah. A lot of us wanted to see it was beautiful. It's just at the end we when it was time for payback time, we yeah. wanted to yeah. we wanted to see some blood. Yeah, yeah they wanted to see some blood. Yes, but he showed the burning of the uh, cane fields and you know. Yes. Yeah. But oh, it was a beautiful movie. I thank mean, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Peace, sister. Yes.